G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Pierre, this is Simple Homebrew. I'm doing a Coco Cabana Coconut IPA today. Uh, it's an all extract recipe done by Kegland. I hope you can join me. So what I've got is a Kegeland recipe. It's a Coco Cabana Coconut IPA. I found it on their website and I ordered the kit in from them. What I received was this, nothing else. Uh, basically, I had to get all the stuff myself because they were out of stock. So I ended up going shopping, buying a heap of things and here we are. So in the instructions, you need these items. You need Munton's Brewmakers IPA, which is that can that I just showed you before. Also, two cans of Export Lager by Munson's, which I couldn't get hold of. So I ended up getting Blue Mountains Lager by Morgan's. I've got two cans of that, so I'm gonna use it. I also need uh, USO5, one packet of USO5. I'm gonna do two because I think this is gonna be very sweet. So I'm gonna do two yeast packets. And Mosaic Vacuum Sealed Hops, 100 grams of that. What we do first is roast the coconut. So we actually roast the coconut in a tray in the oven until they're golden brown. Uh, I did it in two lots. I mixed it as I went, I took it out, put it into a little container and then put the next lot in and mixed that as it went. So it took about 20 minutes, 25 minutes to bake it properly and make it nice and golden brown, which will bring out all the flavors of the coconut with a bit of mmness to it. <laughs> so I left that into the actual green container as you can see in this video. Just as a warning, it can spontaneously combust. So give it a shake, just cool it down a little bit so it doesn't do that. Now that's what I've worked out from doing things in the past. I had uh, situations where things have spontaneously combusted and I don't like to take a chance. The original gravity is out the window because I've added extra or different cans. So we're gonna test that at the end and we'll find out what it is. So now that the coconut's ready, I need to steep 50 grams of the mosaic hops. What I did is grab the hop sock and drop that into two liters of boiling water and boil that for exactly 10 minutes. Turn it off the flame and then I put in half the coconut and let that just soak in the pot with a lid on. Uh, that will stay in the pot with a lid on until I am ready to pour it into the actual fermenter. So that will bring out bitterness, flavors, and all different kinds of scents and you still need to put in half the coconut later on as a uh, addition. So now I have to pour everything into the fermenter and stir it up so let's get started. So now I have to take the lids off the extracts and soften them up. So what I'll do is pull out the extract off, pull the lids off. Uh, so basically we're not using the, we're not using the yeast out of them. Might keep them for later though. They will be sitting in the sink down here. Uh, I'll quickly take a video of them. I'm gonna let some water in here. I'm gonna fill it up until the water is pretty much above the extract. And I'll leave that there for 10 minutes, maybe 15, just to cool them or heat them up so they're nice and soft. Okay, this is hot enough. I will I've got to measure stuff. I've got to make sure I measure stuff because I don't know the configuration of these. I don't know. I know it's a 25 litre, 27 litre fermenter, this one, but it doesn't have graduations to let you know how deep it is. Well, it kind of does. It's written on the side. Here it is. It's a 24. If I go down just under that, six gallons, it's 23, isn't it? I reckon I could just use that. It'll be good enough. Right, so I do have sanitizer in this fermenter. You can't see the fermenter at the moment, but this is the dip tube. I want to tip out the ferment uh, sanitizer that I've got left in here. I'll just leave the excess in there. Pop that back on. I'm going to have to measure the can sizes so I can calculate how much water and fluid I've been putting in. Right, I'll do it. Right, so you need to open up the first can. Now I'll add that in 
Now I'll rinse all these cans up as I'm filling the fermenter. While that's dripping out of the can, I'm going to open the next can up. I used to uh, use an electric can opener. It was annoying, took forever, never opened it properly. So I use this hand one I got from Coles, from our supermarket in Australia. Um, and it's been a godsend. It's just been perfect. It cuts it perfectly neat and it's safe when it cuts it as well. And you can just take the lids off like that. It's one can. You can see my can is sitting here. It'll just drain out into the fermenter. I'm going to fill the fermenter up with all these cans. I'm going to rinse them out a bit. Uh, I'm going to have to really rinse them. I'm going to have to put hot water in each one, give them a good stir up and clean them out because I'm doing it a different method because there's so many cans this time. Usually there's only one can and emptying out one can is uh, through just rinsing and cleaning it out is much easier than doing three. Let that drip out and I'll pop some hot water in these. Now the problem with doing it like this is it's pure hot water. It's 100 degrees Celsius, very hot, but it does dissolve the product much, much quicker, much easier. Rinse. Oh, hot nickel gloves, nickel gloves. Oh, that's a hot one. All right. I don't like this, guys. It is a little bit dangerous. Glasses are fogging up, but it's not bad if you take care. And I didn't get it all, as you can see. Um, I might try and get a bit more out of that later. All right. So this has been stirred in. I'm going to fill these up a bit more. Actually, I've got to fill them right up so I know exactly how much water I've been putting in. Oh, I keep forgetting it's hot. All right, this fell in the water, so it's going to be a bit damp, damp hard, but it's rinsed. I'm going to put that in. Clean, clean as a whistle. I will take a measurement from this jug and the, jug, the bigger jug to find out how much water is in it. So I can take the capacity that I've already put in out of the measurements that I have to put in later. Find out what these jugs actually take in capacity. So remember we did. One of extra of those and one extra of those. All right, I did a calculation. Uh, I basically filled up a can, so the Morgan's Lager one is 1,250ml and the IPA or the Brew Maker one is 1,400. So we put in 7.8 litres in there so far. I also have this stuff to put in. This is the coconut mix with hops. It's all going to go in as well. So I'll pour that into this jug, which is clean. I was making sure I'm thinking about it. It's all going to go in. I've got a problem now. Damn it. I've got a... it smells like um, marijuana. <laughs> Where's... Here it is. So I'll quickly grab some sanitizer on this because it hasn't been sanitized yet. And I can scoop this out now without getting too much skip here. All this is going into my beer. But because I'm putting this in, it's going to be 1.5 litres. I'm going to calculate it at 1.5 litres, even though I'm going to lose a lot. So I'll pour that in. That gives me another 1.5 litres. I'll quickly rinse that. With some hot water, put that in as well. So that gives me another 1.5 litres on top of the 7.8 litres. So we're at 9.30 litres of fluid from 
extract, rinsing, and additions. So the only thing I need to do now is add four liters of coconut water. So this is fresh coconut water. Um, it brings out the flavor and the tropical nuance of the actual beer. I've got to put four liters of this in. These didn't cost much. I think they're 80 cents a bottle or something. Wasn't too bad at all. So four liters is gonna be added to it. This is very interesting, a very interesting concoction that I'm making here, all out of extracts. So once I've done this, I'll get to the next point of adding the extra water in. What does it taste like? Beautiful, that's coconut water. How about that? That's gonna be a bit tangy on the tongue too, so. Have I told you I'm a bit of a coconut fan? Anyway, that tastes really nice. Um, so we're gonna calculate that now. I will put that in. We're at 9.3 litres. So at 13.3 litres, I need to get to 23 litres. So all I need to do is add just under 10 litres. So I will put my filler meter on and I'll put in 10 litres, well 9.7, and we'll have our 23 litres of fluid and then we'll add the yeast. For those of you who haven't seen my channel, I do this step by step what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. I love doing that and they tend to be longer videos but they're hopefully interesting I must say. So this hose is uh, consumer safe, it's actually human consumption safe. So we can actually drink through this hose, it's made for RV caravans, things like that, it's actually a good hose. I get a lot of comments that I'm using garden hose which I'm not, this is actually human consumable safe hose. Just just so you know, I got it from Aldi. Now guys, I have an affiliation with Kegland. There are links below for you guys to get all these products. Anything I use on here will be down there. Click on it if you have any interest in it. If you're thinking of buying it, click on that and you'll send a little bit of money my way to help this channel grow. Cheers. Okay, that is well up. That's uh, right up to about where it normally is actually, about to here if you guys can see that on that camera. Um, which gives me a little bit of headspace, saying it's probably about to there. So it gives me a little bit of headspace. Bit worried, it's a very rich beer. Uh, very thick, so I'm gonna have to stir that as well. So next step is stirring. All right guys, it is a bit full. I'm hoping that the uh, pressure will keep the tr uh, the krausen down. I'm gonna stir it now. So I made a mistake, I actually forgot to to her the actual uh, extract in with the hot water before putting the cold water in. This is what I'm supposed to do. I mean, it'll work all right. I mean, the yeast will eat through it anyway, as long as I get it around and moving. The only reason why I need to get this properly stirred is because you need to take a gravity reading. And if you do a gravity reading and it's not stirred properly, you get a false reading. So you don't know what it's going to be. So let's stir it in a fair bit. I need to put the lid on. So I'll pop the yeast in, I'll stir it up. I'll pop the uh, sanitized tilt in so I get an idea on what the reading is. If you haven't seen it, I always throw a bit of sanitizer on the edges of these just so that, because just so your beer is cold now and it's susceptible to bacteria. If you're not careful, that bacteria will get into your beer. If you get enough of it, it'll affect the beer big time and the flavor will be completely different to what you're you thought, thought of ever getting. So two packets of SA, uh, USA5, very popular. Uh, I'll pop that in. That's done. I'm gonna give this top a pop, bit of a wipe soon. Pop the lid on. Now the biggest reason why I'm doing this is I wanna shake it up. And I want to make sure if I, when it, geez, heavy. Oh, when I shake it up, it'll tell me whether it has enough, uh, if it's leaking or not. And that's a way to oxygenate it as well. That is a workout. That's like nearly 30 kilos. Oh, it's over 30 kilos. I'm shaking around there. Um, next thing, the tilt. I'm going to throw the tilt in. Should I take a gravity reading? I might just take a manual gravity reading. So I'm gonna to need to extract some fluid out of that and I can do that through the out pipe of one of these. 
Right, I get an idea on what it tastes like and what it, the gravity is. Okay, so that's ready to go. Okay, so the, the fermenter's ready to go. I just need to get the tilt, pop that in there, and take a gravity reading, which I'll do right now in front of you guys. I haven't done this before a long time, but here it goes. It's gonna overflow. We're at 1068, 1068 gravity. There you go. Let's taste it, shall we? Mm. How good is that? Got a bit of bitterness to it. It still tastes pretty good though. Oh, I reckon this is gonna be a beauty. <laughs> Probably should be doing that. I can really taste the coconut, which is gonna be more added, more, more hops as well. Really tasty. Love it. All right, the tilt. Okay, so I've got the tilt. Smother it in sanitizer to make sure the bacteria on this doesn't get into the beer. I do have to take the lid off. You're still recording, yep. So, obviously gas this up. So I need to take the lid off. I need to take the gas out first. Grab my tilt. Oh, that smells good. And just drop it in. That's it. I'm pressure fermenting this one. I'm going to set it up so it is 10 psi or 5 psi. So I'm going to pressurize it, and then I'll pressurize. So I'll pressure ferment it in the shed. I'll have a jacket around it, and I'll have it also in a under a heat mat so that it gets keeps keeps warm, and hopefully I'll keep the temperature right on it. It's not easy. Uh, the jackets aren't really made for this, but they do fit. So I've got to get it in the jacket, but it's very heavy to do that. I probably should put it in before I put the fluid in it. So I'll give that a go <laughs> and uh, pop it up on my wine uh, box, which is, I've got a lot of stuff in it that I don't need at the moment, so I don't need it for a couple of weeks. And I'll ferment it on that. Hey guys, welcome back, it's day seven. We're now going to put the coconut in, but I want to tell you what happened during fermentation. Basically the bugger, couldn't wouldn't come down under 23 degrees celsius for at least two days so basically the bag that's around the fermenter is very effective the temperature of the beginning of fermentation was 25 degrees celsius and it didn't drop past 23 degrees for two days until i opened up the bag and let air in to cool it down by uh, you know six hours later it was down to about 14 degrees celsius and then i put a heater under it to give get it back to 18 degrees there's a little bit of mucking around trying to get the temperature right hopefully it hasn't affected the brew too much and it should be okay but it has slowed fermentation down there shouldn't be much of a krausen now so we can now drop the coconut and the hops in so we've got 320 grams of coconut roasted now i roasted this coconut seven days ago and i had to freeze half of it the first half went into the fermenter straight away. The last half went into the freezer. Hopefully there's no bacteria. So what I did was basically heat the oven up to 100 degrees Celsius, pour the remaining coconut into a ceramic pot and put that in the oven for 15 minutes to just heat it up and it might hopefully kill some of that bacteria that might be in there. It's probably not gonna have any, but I'm just being careful. As well as doing that, I put a pot of hot water on the stove Boiled it, popped the hot bag in that I'm going to use for this because I don't want, I mean, there's enough crap in the actual fermenter already. I don't want to add more. So I'm going to put it through a hot sock and soak that in the fermenter as it goes. Uh, anyway, what I did was boil the hot sock for the same amount of time for about 10 to 15 minutes and tied a knot in the end of it and started shoveling the hot coconut into the hot sock. And it worked a treat. And it absolutely work a treat. So once I've finished shoveling the coconut, I'll put the hops in and then I drag it out to the shed and here it is, dropping it in <laughs> to the fermenter. We had no incidents. I'm sorry guys, I know you're like, I have a bit of a laugh, but everything went really well. Uh, the Krausen was down, so it was good. I let the gas out slowly and uh, it came out really good. So I'm sorry guys, there's no incidents this time. We went perfect. <laughs> I'm hoping the beer comes out just as good. So hopefully in the next few weeks I have a beer and I can share it with you. Cheers. So I've got my keg all sanitized ready to go. Um, I just need to rinse it out with the sanitizer. I need to get the lid, uh, the Cornelius keg lid. Where are they? 
So I've got my Cornelius keg lid. When I put it in, I will open the valve up. This is a safety valve or PRV. Um, and also cover everything with sanitizer, as well as um, run the sanitizer through the PRV, just so we've got everything nice and sanitized. I had a problem with a keg just recently where um, the Oh, the PRV didn't bed on the actual uh, lid. And I threw that away because it was just, it did it before and I never knew what it was and I tried different PRVs on it and every time it went wrong. So this time I'm doing it right. All right, um, so now that has sanitizer all in it. I pop the lid on, there's no leaks. Oh, there is, look at that, it's dripping. So I've got a leak, which is why you test all this. You pressure test it as well, so I'll do that, pop, pop some pressure in there. That is now ready to go for transfer of the beer that I'm doing, which is Coco Cabana. We had the Coco Cabana in here for two weeks. Fermentation started at 10.69 and it came down to 10.21. But I'm saying that, the tilt, is floating in a heap of muck and grit and all this kind of stuff that I put in there. It's not giving me a true reading. So I'm, it, I know it hasn't fermented down anymore, hasn't changed. I've given it a bit of a shake to let the um, tilt move around in there a bit more and it just hasn't changed. So it's been three days now since it's changed and I am going to pop the tilt out, test the beer. I don't, maybe I should take the beer out and give it a quick test on the bench and do a quick proper test just to check it. I think I'll do that first before I go and kick it. All right, we'll do that first. Now for me to do that, sorry, say it, don't spray it, they say. For me to do that, I'll need to extract some beer out of it and put that into this little tube and measure the, uh, the gravity. The problem is it's carbonated, so I'm gonna have to give it a bit of time to decarbonate. Before I do that, I wanna show you a quickie. <laughs> oh, sorry, it, it, it always makes me laugh, I can't help it. Um, this is a quick extract. It's basically a quick valve, I suppose. You can push down on the quick connect and it will release some beer out of here. And as soon as you let go, it stops. Uh, really good design, really good idea. It's great for extracting uh, fluids from a product so you can actually receive what you need without actually disturbing the beer too much. So what I'll do, um, this is, under pressure at the moment, so I need to relieve some pressure out of it. So it's down to 12. I really, down to two. I really need to quick work quickly because it's gonna come back up. And of course the, uh, the valve is clogged up with crap. So I can't actually get anything out of it. Well, maybe. Yeah, pressure rising again. Oh, hey, something's coming out. Give it more. Come on. You can do it. I let too much pressure out. <laughs> I'll put a bit of gas in there. <laughs> oh, it smells good. There you go. So it's starting to flow out. It's actually getting flow. Um, it is foamy. And it's going to be foamy because it's under pressure. Uh, and it is carbonated. It's it's naturally carbonated. Okay, sorry about the video footage. It is flickering a little bit. Um, I haven't set it properly. The GoPros are a little bit better for this sort of thing. I am using an old uh, DJI action. But I'm getting the beer out slowly. Check it out, it's very, very cloudy. Um, like I said, it's been fermenting. Oh, it's probably enough in there for me, what I wanna do. What I'm doing now is actually stirring this up. It's gonna make it, um, Try and get rid of all the carbonation to make it nice and flat. It smells all right. And uh, give it some time to decarbonate. Once it's decarbonated, I'll get a reading and see how much it actually has come down in fermentation uh, because the, the tilt isn't going to give me the right uh, reading. So we will endeavor to go through this stage first, check the reading and see how much it actually has come down. Looking at it though, just looking at the dipstick, it is floating at 10.20 at the moment. It probably will be a very sweet beer. 
And I think it is just finished cementing, that's all it is. I think, leave it at 1020, that'll give it a sweet taste. It's gonna be like a creamy, um, uh, tropical thing, I'm gonna taste it. Oh wow, that is really good. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this, it's so creamy. Wow, what a recipe. If you like coconut, this is it. Wow, and it's got a bit of a bitter um, hop taste, which is fine. It's um, got some tropical flavor in it as well. It is perfect. Uh, I'm happy to just leave it at that. I will let it, like I said, I will let it decarbonate and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. But wow, I'm excited. This is gonna be very, very good. Uh, what a recipe, hey? Very creamy, very milky, it's like a milkshake. I will wait till the decarbonation of the beer happens, check out what the actual gravity is, and then I'll start transferring it into a keg. Once it's finished, we're gonna do a taste test on it, see how it is. I won't show you the transfer. I have done a video up here, so I'll leave you a link up here. So if you wanna see how transfers happen, this is what I do. And uh, we'll see you in the tasting. Okay, so I've done the transfer. Uh, it was an absolute nightmare. It was terrible. I suggest get hop socks and put all your coconut in the hop socks, put all your um, hops into your hop sock because the coconut got into everything. It, it just blocked all of my quick connects, it blocked everything and I had to actually, in the, in the end, I had to actually siphon it out with a siphon. Uh, it, 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 just, it just blocked up too much and never got anywhere with it. It took me about an hour and a half to transfer it. I do have a sample, uh, this is a sample for what we've got as in the final gravity i can't show you because it's so cloudy uh it's it is 1021 so it is going to be a sweet beer i'm hoping that it will ferment down a bit more in the actual keg i did transfer some more into a second keg just as a uh I, I, i'm experimenting just want to see what it's like hang on i'm just in the middle of it sorry it just stops flowing all the time. It was just a big, big problem. Oh, it stopped straight away. There's plenty of fluid in there, but it's just not transferring because of all the coconut. Ah, oh, that's because it's empty. So the transfer has stopped because of the coconut. The coconut blocked everything up. Uh, next time I'll make sure I'll put it in a hop sock. It does present to be a very flavoursome beer. Now, I did put some into a glass. Have a look at that. You can see the, uh, the coconut floating on top there. It smells good. Um, it smells beery, of course. It smells like it's been fermenting, but it smells really good. Looking forward to finding or sampling the finished product. It's, it's fairly dark. It's got a lot of coconut in it, but that's gonna have to change. I might have to do something. I might have to filter it out or use that as a secondary. Let it ferment down a little bit more in the actual keg hopefully and uh we'll get some better flavoring out of it so i'll i'll give it another week to ferment i'll put a uh, pressure relief valve on it to make sure that it doesn't ferment harder see how that goes i'll pop the um tilt back in there i'll use it like it's a secondary and that, that'll that'll help me determine whether it's fermented down properly because it's still yeast floating around in here but as a beer it's bloody awesome even with the sweetness of it, it is tolerable. It's very nice, very, very, very coconutty. Um, all the coconut is pretty much uh, dominating the flavor at the moment. But experiences of coconut, it does dis disappear or dissipate after a while. The flavor, it is absolutely phenomenal. It is a craft beer. It's kind of chocolatey, it's more caramelly. Um, mm, that's six and a half percent, so I've got to be careful. I've already drank a couple of six percent beers. But the smell is still new, so it still needs a few more weeks, I suppose, to age. Um, I'm tasting the hot bitterness, but I'm tasting floral, but not much. I'm just tasting more, more of the coconut, and it's kind of oily on the tongue. So it's, it's interesting, very interesting. I'm hoping it will mellow out as uh, time progresses. And I'm hoping I get something B out of it in the end. It's a good experiment. It's uh, a tasty experiment. It's very tropical sound tasting. And uh, 
I'm hoping it'll come out good. Uh, citrus, not much. A little bit tropical. Probably um, a bit of... Um, oh, oh, it's so good. That is going to taste really good in the next week or two. So I will do a tasting video on the final product. Might take a couple of weeks, maybe a month. But when I do, I'll be honest and tell you what it really is like. All right, guys, thank you for watching this channel. Thank you for watching Simple Home Brew. Thank you to my patrons for looking after this channel like they always do. Uh, if you want to support the channel, I'll leave a link down below for um, Patreon Connection. It's only a dollar a month, and it gives you free access to my videos when I post them up to three days before I post them. Absolutely ad-free. All right, guys, thank you very much. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.